Hello and welcome to this final tutorial when we're looking at 3D space, setting things up in 3D space, getting a particle system that's static and will stay the same throughout 3D space, simply animating a camera which is what we looked in the last tutorial. Now this last one is about finessing that camera so that we can have it moving not just in straight lines but we can actually have things moved in more of a curved way, we can create much in more interesting looks and also how we can make sure that when we get these items coming into screen that they aren't completely filling the screen but we can see a little bit more of them as we move through. So let's actually start with that particular one. So if we look at the actual layer, each layer comes in on this null object and it fills the screen completely which isn't actually what we want. So what we can do is not animate the camera control anymore but actually go to the camera layer itself and open it up and look at some of the options. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to my custom view to actually demonstrate this. So if we're looking here at layer 1, what I want you to see is, if we look at the camera, you've got three different bits and pieces. You've got the origin of the camera itself, where it's looking from. You've got the little dot just here, which is the point of interest, and a focal plane. What we need to think about is, what do we need to animate to be able to make sure that everything is still in focus? I'm going to show you a couple of options in the camera here. I'm going to open up the camera, I'm going to open up Transform and I'm going to open up the camera options. There's lots of them and I'm not going to go through all of them. But what I want you to see is you can animate the point of interest. So you can see I can take that point of interest backwards and forwards. But that's not going to change how close or far away we are. That's just going to change where the camera focuses. Which is actually very important for when we add in depth of field. So I'm going to Control Z that. We don't want to animate that. We could potentially just animate the position of the camera. But what I think we really want to look at is not moving the position of the camera, Control Z, but actually go down to the camera options and control the zoom. So if I actually get onto that layer and I start to pull the zoom up, you'll see that I'm getting in and I'm going out with my focal plane, but my point of interest is always going to stay the same. So if we animate the zoom or we set the zoom depending on what you want to do we're actually going to achieve the result that we want to achieve so I'm going to go back to my active camera and you'll see that by moving the zoom my point of interest is staying absolutely locked to the layer but I can pull right back or I can pull right forwards and change things around as we're moving them okay now that's important so that we can get the right view and you can animate the zoom over time so if you don't want the them all the layers to look exactly the same when you move to them you can actually play around and animate the zoom now you can see my particle system isn't big enough there's a couple here where my particle system isn't big enough see two definitely isn't big enough so if your particle system's not big enough which we've done before and then go down to my active camera and look at my particle system here go back up to my particle system which is here select it open up particle world and I can see that I might need to change my radius in the X, possibly a bit more in the Z, um, just to fill in those gaps that weren't there. Now I can go back to my active camera, and you can see I've actually got some particles there. I still need, might need to add more in, actually, but you get the idea of, of how this works. Right, so if I wanted to, I could have, say, one being at this point, and then if I animated zoom on my camera, it's zoom, I could actually have it at a different place for each of the different layers, but actually I'm quite happy with this one. Now, if you look at layer 4, you'll see that layer 2 is in the background. And one of the reasons I wanted to use zoom and not anything else is that I want to enable something called depth of field, which is going to blur stuff in the background. So that we can just keep our focus on the foreground, and everything else that's either too close or too far behind is going to be blurred. It's a camera effect. And you'll see that under zoom, we've got something called depth of field. You can click on depth of field, and then we can start to turn up the aperture. Or you can turn up the blur level, whichever one works best for you for the end result you want. But you'll see that this two in the background is now blurring quite considerably as I either turn up the aperture 
or I turn up the blur amount. So you can play with those to get the right sort of look that's going to work well for what you're looking at. And so and we can still go back to any layer, but anything that's too close or anything that's too far away is now well and truly blurred. So that's beginning to add a lot more finesse to our camera. We can pull things backwards and forwards. We can make, zoom things in and out. We can make sure we've got depth of field so stuff in the background isn't so distracting. Because if we don't have depth of field, turn it off again. You can see that that too is far too obvious and distracting. Turn it on and the two's blurred. It's there, but really your focus is clearly kept on the number four. The other thing I wanted to show you this is at the moment, if we actually hit the space bar and do an animation, you can see that everything is extremely static for that one second between each of the four layers that we're working with. What we want to be able to do is have those layers move a little bit, to have a little bit of camera shake or, or handheld camera look. And what we can do is we can actually add an expression. Now you can add it to the zoom, but actually I think I'm going to add an expression probably to the position of the camera. And we can just add what's called a wiggle, which will wiggle the position of the camera in and out, up and down, and left and right, because we're going to be animating a camera which moves in three dimensions. So if we take the position and we hold the Alt or the Option on the PC key and click on there, we can add an expression to the position. And this is what you type. You just type wiggle, W-I-G-G-L-E, open brackets, and then you need to think about how many times a second you want it to move. Now I'm going to do two, which is probably a bit too much for real world, but it'll make the point clearly. So two times a second I want it to move, by how much? So again, I'm going to do a reasonably high figure to give you an example. I'm going to do 50 pixels. Then I'm going to close the brackets, so I've got a wiggle on my position. And I'm going to hit enter on my number pad, or if you don't have a number pad, just click away and it's accepted. So wiggle, open brackets, two times a second, comma, by 50 pixels, close brackets. Now when I hit the space bar, you'll see that whenever it stops, we've got some movement going on, up and down, left and right, backwards and forwards. And so we've got a little bit of a handheld movement, and it really helps those particles to show the 3D or the, the parallax, if you like, parallax effect of what we're looking at. So that's some of the things we can do. Now the other thing we haven't done is we haven't played with these paths. Now if you go back to the cam control and click on position, you'll see the actual paths that the camera is taking, and they are very straight each time from one thing to another. Now one thing we can do is select the word position and easy ease those keyframes. The keyboard shortcut is F9, but if you're on a Mac and it doesn't work, which it sometimes doesn't, you can right click on any one keyframe with them all selected, go to the keyframe assistant and click easy ease. Now what's that done is it's sort of made the arrival and the departure from the keyframes a lot better, but it's not changed the path. The path is still very straight. But we can move this path in a number of ways. For instance, we could go back to our custom view and we can look at the path. So we can see that we're starting here and then we're moving across to here. Now if you take the pen tool, you can click on a path and create a point which can then be animated. You can change the handles and we'll move it in a minute. So I can click on each one of these paths and add a point. I want to get into that path. There you go. So I've got a, a point on each of these paths. Now if I go back to my pointer tool, my selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, I can now take these points and I can pull them out in 3D space and move them around so that the angles that these items are flowing are not going to be the same. Now notice that this point here has actually got handles and I can pull the handles out to smooth the path but this point hasn't. If I go back to my pen tool at this point and click on it I can convert it to have handles. Click to convert, click to convert and then actually you can go back to your arrow tool, select that point and you can actually pull out these handles to give much more smooth looking animations and you can pull them up and you can pull them down and pull them around to get a much different way of working. Now the other way of doing it would have been to have done it in our standard active camera and where you would have done is you would have moved to where you want the path to change and then when you want to add a keyframe you simply move this gizmo. Now notice you've got a green, a yellow and a red. You can actually pull a point forward and backwards in X 
or up and down in Y or side to side in Z and you can create the points that way to be able to give that animation. So if I now do one final preview of the whole thing, I'm going to select all of my layers by going Control A and I'm just going to twirl them all up by twirling one, they're all twirled. I'm going to add motion blur to layer one, two, three and four as well so that they will blur as they go through. And I'm going to do a proper playback with my space bar, so I'll come back to you after it's rendered. So there we go. We're now ready to look at the whole thing. I've made it slightly bigger. I've got motion blur on for the whole comp and all of those layers with motion blur. So this is the final version. Obviously, you can play around with it to your heart's content. Uh, I don't actually need to see this null object, by the way. So if you don't want to see the cam control null object, just turn off the eyeball and hit play. So there you go, we've set up 3D space and we've used custom views to be able to look at all the layers and then we've set up a particle system which doesn't change so it just stays there all the way through and then we've animated the camera, if I just click the camera layer we can see it moving between these different bits and pieces so that we can actually have a look at the individual layers directly, we've got a perfect view because we use copy and paste to be able to look at these points absolutely perfectly as we went through them. And then we added a wiggle to the position of the camera so that we could actually have it moving and giving a little bit more of a parallax look. That's the foreground moving at a different speed from the background, giving a real 3D effect. Well, I hope you found these tutorials useful. I've certainly enjoyed doing them. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.